How much has changed since March the 24th? QB1, Andy Dalton, QB1. They have a new QB who wears number one in Justin Fields. Here's Andy Dalton talking about his mindset after he learned that the Bears had traded up nine spots in the first round to select the Ohio State quarterback. I knew the situation I was going into, regardless if they drafted somebody or they didn't. I was on a one-year deal, and I was going to be the starter. So my mindset didn't have to change. I already knew that I'm going to do everything I can to be the best player I can for this team and to help us win a lot of football games. And that's been my goal from the very beginning. And so uh, whatever happens after this year happens, but um, my mindset didn't change just because they drafted Justin. Yeah, look, what else is he going to say? What else is he going to say? Yeah. And he'll, he'll get a chance. He'll get a chance, presumably. Mike Glennon got four games in 2017 before they went with Mitchell Trubisky. And if Andy Dalton comes out and plays well, maybe they do decide to keep Justin Fields on the bench. And I keep coming back to that nagging sense I have. Matt Nagy's experience, 2017, with the Chiefs. Yeah. They put Patrick Mahomes on ice for the whole year. Different from the standpoint of right. Andy Dalton's equity with the Bears, none. And Alex Smith's with the Chiefs, right. plenty. But... But Nagy saw that work, and only he knows what went on. Well, others with the Chiefs do, but yeah. he's the only one with the Bears who knows what went on behind the curtain to get Patrick Mahomes ready. He may have a plan, a 100-point plan. Here's how you get your first-round quarterback ready so he can come out and set the league on fire in his second season, Chris. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with your thought. I, I would certainly think that, you know, that thought's percolating in his brain and everybody in the, the Bears organization. But I also think, like, um, it is a different situation, like you explained. You know, the Chiefs were good, a playoff team. Alex Smith was kind of looked at like a franchise-ish type quarterback still, where we know what Andy Dalton is. I think we know what the Bears fans think he is. I mean, they weren't, like, you know, storming the streets and like, yes, we got Andy Dalton QB1, here we go, Super Bowl. No, so there's going to be tremendous – I can already tell just by a few of the you know media obligations I've done in Chicago. There's gonna be tremendous pressure on Justin Fields, as or, or, or on the Bears organization to get Justin Fields on the field. I just think there's a clamoring for that already. There is so uh, there there. This is a different type of scenario, and I think they're gonna be. I think ultimately a little bit more anxious to put fields out there and see what he can do as compared to that Mahomes and Kansas city Chiefs situation. Sometimes the answer is hiding in plain sight. Yeah. When Andy Dalton says, I knew the situation I was going into, regardless of if they drafted somebody or they didn't, I was on a one year deal and I was going to be the starter. If a promise was made to Andy Dalton to get him to sign and that promise is not honored, that that's a bigger issue for the bears. Not that promises, are broken all the time in pro sports. Yeah. But if Matt Nagy and or Ryan Pace gave their word to Andy Dalton that he's the starter and it meant something more than your QB1 for March, April, May, June, and that part of July when we don't have training camp, then after that all bets are off. You got to sing for your supper. You got to earn your spot. If a promise was made that he's the starter to start the season. Yeah. Then he is. He is. Sunday Night Football. Right. Andy Dalton and the Bears take on Matthew Stafford and the Rams, period. Yeah. So, and now, now by week two, who That knows? doesn't mean, right. But, we started you week right. one. Yeah, exactly right. But he's the starter. If they, they that, that confidence from Dalton, who's been around for a decade, speaks to me that a promise was made to him. Will the promise be honored? That's really the question, if that promise was made. And, and when we look at his words, that implies to me that they told him, you're the starter week one yeah I, I I feel the same way Mike I don't think it was like hey we promise you you're gonna be the starter I that that is like a rare thing to hear from any coach on anything but we're not wire to wire but, all but yeah weeks, but I think they probably weeks. said hey we want you here and you're gonna be our starting quarterback and let's see where it goes now I mean he was aware of the situation as he explained and everything like that so you know that that's yeah, I would bet there was something like that said. By the way that Andy Dalton, what is this, the second or third or fourth time we've kind of heard him say this publicly? But that also doesn't mean, yeah, you could start and, hey, like I talked about yesterday or with Justin Fields, third series of the first game, hey, we got a Justin Fields package. We're going to get it going. We're going to see what we got here. 
and see if we can't, you know, create create some schematical advantages for our football team because this guy has a different skill set altogether. You know, I I feel like uh, in a lot of ways, this might be the like out of the quarterbacks drafted in the first round, the, there's just the most pressure on the quarterback situation because the Bears fans and the are so thirsty for a franchise quarterback. It's Justin Fields. They've seen what he's done in college football and all those type of things. It's Andy Dalton. And man, if he has any success in these preseason games, I just think the whole fan base and the whole city is going to be like, what are we waiting for? Let's just go. Let's play him. He looks great. So what if he's not perfect? And that's where I think it could be a lot of pressure on this situation. This is a team that hasn't had a franchise quarterback since Sid Luckman. Jay Cutler was the closest that they came. He had, he had a lot of stats, set a lot of team records, but didn't have a lot of success in the whole get to the playoffs and win games. They got to the NFC Championship in 2010, lost to the Packers. Remember that controversy where, wait, is Cutler really injured? Can, yeah, right. Can he play? Should he have played? But they're clamoring for a franchise quarterback. They're still reeling from trading up to take Mitchell Trubisky instead of standing pat to take Patrick Mahomes. They can't get past that. And they traded up to get yeah, see? the guy who was one of the most polarizing pre-draft figures with the opinions about whether or not he's going to make it. All the ingredients are there right. for there to be a ton of pressure right. and a ton of angst. Remember when we were in Chicago two years ago yeah. for the opener? All the angst, all the dismay, all the concern about Mitchell Trubisky. I mean, they're, they're, so now they're just carrying that around about Justin Fields. What do we have? There's only one way to find out. Let's go see what he has. Let's open that envelope. What do you mean do not open until 2022? I want to open it now. Yeah. I want to see what this guy is. It's going to be hard for them to push that, back. That's, that's, that's how I feel. Exactly right. It's going to be hard to hold it off to go oh, to 2022. And, you know, I think realistically, too, when you look at it, we've talked about the Nagy you know, and Ryan Pace, how much longer do they have? How successful they may have? Like, yeah, it, it, it seems like they at least have two years with making that draft pick and doing that. So, you know, and I look at the Bears and go, well, you're not winning the Super Bowl this year. I, I don't mean to be disrespectful. I think they can be highly competitive and a pain in the butt, but I don't look at them as a Super Bowl contender. I don't. And, you know, they, they have Andy Dalton at quarterback. Say what you want to say, but that's the perception there. So, you know, why wouldn't you, you know, okay, yeah, we're two and two or we're three and two and Dalton's been good, but not great. Why wouldn't you want to get a guy out there who we know is raw in some areas and needs some work? And they know that too, to where let's get it going. Let's get some of these issues fixed. Let's get them better now for 2022. Uh, that That's where I think with, between all the things you said there and all that, that's where I just think it's a lot different situation that Chiefs won, and there's a lot more pressure here. And I just think we're going to see Justin Fields early on in the year, for sure, in some capacity. The situation also presents a challenge for the coaching staff when it comes to divvying up the reps Ooh, that matter yeah. to get Andy Dalton ready, to get Justin Fields ready. You still got a Super Bowl MVP lurking at the bottom of the depth chart in Nick Foles. Here's head coach Matt Nagy talking about the plan when it comes to figuring out who's going to get those chances in practice to develop. I've talked to, to all three of them. And as we go into these practices, as we go into training camps, knowing how valuable it is for, for Justin to get his reps, you know, and, and then Andy, obviously uh, to, to get his reps too. Nick and I have talked and he understands that going into this, that Justin's going to get the two reps and that Nick's going to get the, the three reps. And, uh, Nick is a true pro and understands it, uh, is still very competitive. And that's why I say like in all these meetings, it's, uh, it's just really special to see how they're trying to help Justin out and, 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 and teach him how to play quarterback and how to, how to um, watch film and study this offense, but also Justin helping them too with what he sees. So it's been really good. Yeah, hey, look, it, it's, it's, I, I don't envy the situation that Matt Nagy's in, and I don't know how much of this they sat down and envisioned ahead of time, but they had months to plan. They knew where they were, and I think you know part of the cover to move up and get a Justin Fields was go out and sign an Andy Dalton. We said that when the Bears signed Dalton and Washington signed Ryan Fitzpatrick. That took the huge sign off right. the front lawn that said, get ready for us to draft a quarterback in round one. Washington didn't. But there was talk that maybe yeah, there was, try to right. get up into the top 10 to get Trey Lance. Right. 
and the Bears did, and uh, now you got to go forward with it. And you know, the the good news is you got a guy who could develop into your franchise quarterback. The not so good news is you got to get there first. Yeah, and how they do it, and that's why I think when when you're confronted with a problem like this that can be an unenviable one, if you can resort to your own experiences for a situation that worked, that becomes the path because yeah, sure. if it blows up if it blows up and Matt Nagy's facing the tough questions say hey I we did it in Kansas City with Patrick Mahomes and it worked that was my experience and I I was not going to do anything different than what was proven to have worked with the Chiefs so I don't know over under again Mike Glennon got four games before they went with Trubisky I, I don't know what's what, what's the over under on starts I for Justin Fields in your mind I mean, I, I think it's right this around year. that. Well, I think it's right around that area. I think it's week three or four. I, I, I you know, I, I've talked about this on my podcast a little bit. You know, I, I know I've said it to you and all those type of things too. It just, I, I just have a hard time envisioning them not letting him get in here or there. And I, I think he has a chance to be st like start ten games, maybe more. I really do. I think eventually that's what what's going to happen. You know, and and the fact that he's already number two. They're talking about getting them up to speed and doing those things. Yeah, Nick Foles doesn't need reps. If you have a 12-play, seven-on-seven period, I would bet you Justin Fields and Andy Dalton are going to get about equal reps right now. Let's say it's 12 plays. I bet you Andy Dalton gets the first five, Justin Fields gets the next five, and Nick Foles gets the last two plays of there. Or it's like five, four, and three, something like that. But that's got to be the number one goal. I mean, they went all in on Justin Fields. They went all in. That was a huge move. It's, it's, it's either going to make them or break them, Pace or Matt Nagy. So that's where I just keep coming back to, like, I, 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 I know what you're saying with the formula and all of those type of things, but I don't think the Bears fans are expecting Super Bowl this year. And I would do something to me where I would favor, and let's get them excited for the future. Let's get this guy ready, and let's not have to worry about having the training wheels on him in 2022 uh, to where now we feel like our team is set up to do something special, and now our quarterback's not ready. I think that's really what the thought has to be all year long for the Chicago Bears. Can we pop the schedule back up? Because I, I think we need to understand how this season could unfold, uh -huh. beginning to understand how much time Andy Dalton gets. They're going to the Rams right out of the gate with Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey, and hey, I, I don't know, unless Andy Dalton throws five interceptions, I think he gets a chance to host the team that drafted him 10 years ago, week two, home opener, Cincinnati Bengals. And if you can check that box with a win, then you get a chance to go back to Cleveland, yeah. a place where he's used to playing during his time with Cincinnati. And even if they lose that game, if he's respectable in that game, you got two winnable games. Sure. All due respect to the Lions and the Raiders. You got two winnable games that are on the horizon after that before the season really starts with Packers, Bucks, 49ers, Steelers. Hello. Yeah. So I, I think he can earn. Yeah. Based upon what he does the first five games. Right. Or doesn't do. Yeah. And then maybe we see fields. But he could, based on the first five games, earn the ability to embark on this stretch where it's either going to be flip to Justin Fields at the bye week after the Steelers game or stick with Dalton. But Packers, Bucks, 49ers, Steelers, if Dalton can earn the right to be the quarterback going into that quartet of games, I think that goes a long way toward determining whether it's Fields or Dalton out I of the know. Right. I think the, the way the schedule sets up, he's got a chance for the first five, yeah. a smaller chance for the next four, and then probably we go Fields after the bye week based upon that that murderer's row to finish the first half of the schedule. Could could be. I could certainly see that being a scenario. There's no doubt about it. What if they get through those first five weeks like you're talking about and they got a favorable record? Would they think about maybe doing like the Miami Dolphins thing like last year where they just go, wait, we, I mean, we, we got to get this guy in here. I mean, uh, to, to maybe, you know, just get him playing. Not not let Andy Dalton just thrive all year long, and then we'd be stuck in a. That's not going to happen. That's a stupid scenario. So I'm not even going to dive down that. But here's well, another well, one. Well, but you know what? Here, here's yeah. another one though. Let me right. think of that. let me right. tell you that. Let's try, let's test this one out. Yeah. I know we got to go to break, but I want to uh, say one more fun. thing too. Yeah. We're go spitballing ahead. here. Yeah. What, what what if they flip to Fields? <laughs> what, what if what if we find out next year at this time from Justin Fields he didn't know the offense very well like Tua said last week and and we we see the relief pitcher concept yeah that's what I we mean we see Justin Fields right. start and if 
and and uh, you know, if it goes haywire in a given game, in comes Andy Dalton to mop it up. Maybe we could see that. I, that's where I was. I was kind of going with that. I, I I was. I guess I was a little a different situation, but not totally. I, I guess not really. And yeah, that's where I was kind of going with it. I I do think Miami kind of like broke the ice with that. Like like, hey, this is okay. It's not like taboo or forbidden to do this. So maybe that's a possibility. Here's the last thing before we go to break. I just want to ask you. You talked about the what-if scenarios if it's positive for the first five weeks. What if they lose to the Rams and lose to the Bengals? What if that? Then do you start to go, let's just get them going and let's, let's get the Justin Fields train rolling? I think in his return to Ohio, Justin Fields will be the starter. Yeah. And uh, all those folks from Columbus can buy their tickets for the Bears at Browns game, and they can wear their number one Justin Fields jersey at their own peril at First Energy Stadium <laughs> right. in Cleveland. So, yeah, I think that that if they start off 0-2 and, and they lose to the Bengals, especially given where the Bengals are right now. Yeah, Joe Burrow I, I think yeah. I think Justin Fields has a very good chance to be the starter come week yeah. three. Right. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.